Hello everyone, in this video we'll be talking about the power of research if you are applying for residency. Now, imagine you are a program director. You have to recruit someone who is all-rounder. Good scores, good CV, good letter of recommendation. What else you are looking for? Good research on their paper, right? So, we'll talk about how research is going to leverage your entire application for residency you know, selection and recruitment. So first of all, let's talk about why you should get some research on your CV. So number one, it's going to make your application stand out because these days you'll find many good scores candidates, right? You, everyone would have 250s and 260s in their CV in the steps. Now, what other things you should do? You can add some research and good volunteer experience, right? This is something you can modify. So once you get a score, you cannot change that. But if you if you are adding research onto your CV, that's that's a modifiable thing. So it's it's gonna make you shine amongst good scorers. Now remember this thing: don't just run after research. You have to make sure you get good scores first. Okay. So scores, then comes the research and CV enhancement. So it's gonna make your application stand out. The other thing is it will it's gonna provide you networking opportunities. Now we are going to go to the networking website, find the mentors. You'll you'll read their profile and send an email to them in a way that will give you a valuable networking opportunity so that eventually they can write a letter of recommendation for you, okay? And third thing, like for example, I am from India, it will take me forever to get a green card, right? But if I have good number of citations and research, eventually I can apply for EB1 so you can get express green card in one to two years. That's, that's something to keep in mind that why ultimately you, you want some research on your, on your CV. Second thing, so let's say, okay, now you understand, I need to get some research. What's the first step? What should I do? I don't know nothing about research. I was in the same um, spot and same shoe as you are in right now if you are completely new to the research system. So the simple advice I give, give to everyone is start from a case report, okay? Don't just, you know, you know, keep taking the courses and, you know, study about research indefinitely. You have to start working. Unless you start working on a project, you won't understand how to how to move forward, okay? So first thing is commit on a case report. Okay, say, let's say you are going to write a case report on this and this thing. If you are de-identifying the data, you don't need necessarily need to take IRB permission. If you are de-identifying the data, you just take the presentation, labs, and ultimately what management you have done. And you have to also make sure that that's a high quality case report and that's not something which everybody has published already, okay? So a different and rare kind of presentation entitles for case report. So I would say start with a case report. Uh, if you're not entirely sure how to write, you can find find a senior or a mentor who can, who can ultimately help you. Here I would like to emphasize one very important thing. Don't ask everyone that, hey, you know, I'm, I'm ready for working for the case reports. Would you help me? No, just find a title, find a case report, find everything and say, hey, this is the project I'm working on. Would you be able to help me? Okay, so if you are asking whole sort of blind questions to somebody, they won't be able to answer like for example i get hundreds of messages would you be able to help me how will i be able to you know segregate those who are seriously interested so find find a case report start uh, targeting the journal like for example if you are targeting in a journal study their format that you need to write a title abstract introduction case presentation and uh, discussion and ultimately conclusion so get get familiar with the format in, in what journal you want to publish that um, case report in. And ultimately managing and learning how to how to manage the reference in the case report so you can learn EndNote. That's one of my favorite uh, citation software. It's pretty simple and easy to use. So learn EndNote to manage your references and citation, okay? So first step, case report, EndNote, and find a senior or mentor who can ultimately help you and publish it, okay? That's a good starting point. Let's talk about how to advance in your research. Now, first thing which I would highly recommend uh, you to check is Doximity. That's a very good website. I just came to know recently about Doximity. That's a very good networking website. So it will give you a list of residency programs, like right? So you can also get list of residency program for ACGME, ERAS, and FRIDA, but you know, Doximity will kind of help you filter out and will ultimately help you find the websites and email address of the 
of the research faculty as well okay so make your profile into Toximity so create an account and then um, search the institution find the right mentor and you know the key thing to ultimately advance in research is getting a right mentor so you know let's say you are interested in XYZ you know mentor who has a great research history he's working at Mayo or John Hopkins number of you know presentations and publications so you read about them read about the latest publication and make a personalized email and send it to them that hey you know I'm interested in this uh, field and I was you know very much impressed by your recent work which you have done and published in so and so journal and similarly my interest aligns with your interest so I'm, I'm highly interested in working with you and uh, once you get the email you immediately reply them that hey you know let's start working on something so you know of course there are some formats and formalities which you have to follow in the email but that's a great way to start if you want to advance your you know research skill the other important thing in Doximity you'll find uh, is is looking for open positions so in Doximity you'll find all the residency programs right and in those programs let's say you know Massachusetts General Hospital right so you go to them there'll be some empty research or unfilled research position you can apply them and ultimately find a research position okay this is something if you want to advance your research skills so a step back so if you are looking to advance your research skill there are two options one is the institutional research and the second one is non-institutional research so the things which I mentioned right now going through Doximity finding the open research as well as mentor those are like all institutional research and non-institutional research is you know like for example I did I did not know anything about research I reached out to my seniors and mentors and said that hey if you are working on any project just just leave the entire manuscript on 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 me I will write your manuscript I'll handle the references and then you can just have you know you, you just help me reviewing the manuscript and ultimately helping in error finding and ultimately you know analyzing if it's appropriate so that's how I learned how to write manuscripts and gradually how to manage references so those are non-institutional so if you have any seniors or mentors who are working on projects just hey, say them hey I'm willing to help you in writing manuscript you have to show your interest that hey okay I can handle and lead the entire project okay and that's gradually you can grow your network in non-institutional you know way of performing research now uh, the fourth thing is you know everybody asks me hey I worked as a as a researcher at so and so place and now I have two years of gap how will I address so one or two year of research gap is still acceptable universities or programs won't label that as a red flag so as long as it's one to two year it's fine okay uh, fifth thing what is funded versus unfunded research funded is they are giving you stipend they are providing you all the necessary software and operation cost everything is covered by some sort of scholarship or grant those are called as funded research non-funded research which I did mostly are usually self-funded meaning you might have to bear the publication cost you might have to you know take care of your housing your everything basically okay um, everything comes out out of your pocket also one of the frequently asked question is what is good research and bad research right um, good research you know this is a very broad topic to discuss but you know if, if your research is innovative it's filling the gap in the knowledge right now and it's well designed with a good replicability meaning yeah, I did some research and now I can extrapolate these findings to the general population those are like very broad terms but this is what good research is is about bad research meaning a, a topic is extensively researched already and you are doing that over and over again it's a different story that if you are trying to enhance the power but if it's already done so many times you're doing it over and over again uh, poor methodology and flawed data okay those are like some example of bad research next important thing seventh is impact factor okay impact factor one one you know commonly asked question is will this research be published in PubMed remember guys PubMed is not a publication agency right it's like a search engine so once you publish a research in general ultimately it will be indexed in PubMed okay so your research may be indexed in PubMed but you don't publish in PubMed uh, so a good journal you know usually would have PubMed indexed papers okay 
so one important thing to keep in mind is impact factor of the journal like for example a journal would have a very high impact factor so what is impact factor so whatever research are published in that journal out of those research how many research are getting average number of citations for example all the research are getting four average citation that's a good impact factor so high impact factor journal are are more visible it will give you more visibility more visibility meaning more chances of that research being you know eventually cited okay the other thing important to keep in mind it's not easy to publish in very high impact factor journal um, you need a good senior author very good methodology and you know a sort of flawless design if you look at the average rate of acceptance it may be 5 to 15% so you have less chances of publication if you are targeting very high impact factor journal like jama and nature so if you are a beginner what i did was i would target a low impact factor journal initially that's a strategic way to build your portfolio okay you start from low impact factor get that published get number of research in your profile then you you know grow your network and start reaching out that hey i already have these many research i'm also interested in collaborating with you so that's how you gradually build your profile so that was my few cents about you know getting research on your board if you are applying for any residency program if you have any questions or if you if you are interested in starting a case report you can text me on instagram but please keep in mind just don't text me that hey i am interested in doing a case report just get a title you know see what you have to do and then ultimately you know we can meet and finalize your case report and help you publish so if you have any other questions please uh, feel free to reach out to me in instagram my instagram handle is dr apurva underscore popad and important thing to keep in mind is u assembly step preparation is utmost important get your scores first and then focus on your cv okay so if you're looking for step preparation also check out my website usmlstrike.com and please leave any new ideas you have which you want to you know finally give to the future applicants that what you they should keep in mind if they want to you know ace their interviews or how to you know enhance their cv so write those things in the comments that will be helpful for them thank you